here again this year. It's good to see a lot of new people and a lot of the ones that are here every year. Uh, I'm Richard Mulize and I'm the, uh, the, the past commander because um, I was a commander for so many years I finally found somebody that would take the job from me. It was hard getting somebody to do it. <laughs> but I'd like to introduce him now. This is the commander Ron Muir from Carbondale. Just have a little silence until the tolls finish. I'm not much on talking, I'd just like to say thank you all for showing up. We all know what this day is about and we'll get right to it. If I could have Nick Mattice and Brooke Stern come forward please, Nick will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and Brooke will do the National Anthem for us. I pledge allegiance. Thank you, Nick. Brooke, if you want to come forward, the mic is yours. You're welcome. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming.
What a beautiful job that was. I would like Nick and Mary Burrell to come to the podium, please. They have a presentation to make. Good morning, everybody. Joseph Pepper Kernitsky is considered one of the historians of German. He was always interested in this small piece of land here on the river. He contacted the German Shade Tree Commission to see what could be done about this because this land had served as a dumping ground for the townspeople. We even found bed springs here. The Shade Tree Commission obtained a grant to refurbish the place. It became known as World War I Park because of the 12 silver trees, 12 silver maple trees that were planted in 1919 to honor the 12 servicemen from German who were killed in World War I. The rock in the park back here is a replica of a large rock that Pepper found in the woods below Hosey Dam. A World War I so soldier, his name was Private Solitsky, and he lived in the lane, and he went up to the woods and he carved a stick figure of a World War I vet, even with the type of hat they wore. And he put these words, peace is dear, but mother is sorrowful. On Memorial Day, our memorial here in the park gives the history, this plaque right over here, gives the history of how the park came to be. Pepper has written a book regarding the deserted village of Edgerton. We are honoring Pepper today for all the civil projects, civic projects in which he had been involved. The plaque reads, Commendation Award, presented in grateful acknowledgement to Joseph Pepper Kronitsky for his dedication and personal service to the Borough of German, its organizations and citizens, for his pres preservation of places of historic interest, for his commitment in assisting the German Shade Tree Commission in reclaiming and rededicating the World War I Veterans Park, and his selfless dedication and passion to community involvement, historic preservation, and beautification on behalf of the citizens of German Shade Tree Commission and citizens of German. We extend our sincere gratitude and best wishes November 11, 2015. Good morning. I would like to thank all of you for the kindness and honor bestowed upon me this morning. However, today is not about me. It is Veterans Day. It is about the brave of young men who paid the supreme price for their country and giving their lives so we would be free. This peaceful and serene park is the fulfillment of the dream created on the battlefields of war and carried in my heart from my youth to the present unforgettable moment. Our country, the land of the brave and free, the United States of America was conceived on the battlefields of war and etched not only on a stone, but in the hearts of mothers, wives, sisters, grandmothers, fathers, and brothers, and never
to be forgotten even as we cross into the threshold of eternity. I am reminded of reading a story about General Stonewall Jackson during the Civil War after a battle when he and his men were wounded, fled to an open field and he told them to rest. The general said, we will go into the woods, cross over the river, and rest under the shade of the trees. This tranquil and still World War I Memorial Park has also become for us a resting place after the battles we face in our own lives becoming so heavy we too need a break and we need to pray and reflect and find solace. Once upon a time this was a place you would sit under the trees and wait for the Scranton Transit bus, make a pickup with people going to the carving shopping or going to the Irving and majestic theaters or waiting to go into the voting booth at the Episcopal Church or this simple yet remarkable sight was simply a place to take a breather and meet friends and neighbors. Also, I'm also reminded this morning at this special place of rest and peace, the words of the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. Today, in remembrance of World War I, you honor the past. In honoring me, you show kindness to the present, and I return the dignity and honor back to you, the precious citizens of our beloved German community. In never forgetting, we enter into the future together with hope and everlasting peace. And this must be seen as a gift and prayerful response from the Prince of Peace. Thank you very much. Now, if Reverend Kowalczyk will please come forward for the blessing of the veterans. Good morning. On behalf of St. Michael's Orthodox Church in East German, I'm honored to say a few words of blessing upon our veterans. We live in perilous times. 1918 was not so far long ago. Yet, on the battlefields, our freedom was won. World War I in particular, the war to end all wars. Yet, in our nation's history, we realize the difficulties that lie before us. It is a time when our country is under attack, both visible and invisible. More than ever, prayers and blessings upon the soldiers of our country, the veterans, and all those who come to its defense is needed more than ever. When we sing the very famous hymn, God Bless America, we intone a prayer and a blessing together, a prayer of defense. And my prayer this morning is that our Lord Jesus Christ continue to shower his blessing upon the veterans and in particular those who are wounded who wear the battle scars as a result of their defense and we pray for all soldiers this morning that the freedom that we enjoy the idea to get together and to celebrate and honor and dedicate shall never be taken away from us. O oh Lord, we ask you to send your blessing upon all the veterans. Send your blessing upon civil authorities and our leaders, the President of these United States, the Congress and the Senate. Renew that patriotic freedom, that joy in our country once again. Let us build up our Army and Navy and Marine Corps so that we will defend 
and be the guardians of freedom throughout the world. May God bless all of you, may God bless America, and may God bless all the veterans today. God bless you. And on behalf of St. Michael's Orthodox Church, we uh, also thank all of you for honoring one of our own, Joseph Pepper Kronitsky. Thank you and have a wonderful program and a wonderful day today.
Can we get one more round of applause for a wonderful job by the German Community Choir? If Lieutenant Colonel Eugene Caracciolo and Mrs. Perot will please step forward. Mrs. Perot will give us some background on the Lieutenant Colonel. We are so honored today to have Lieutenant Colonel Eugene Caracciolo as our special guest speaker at our annual Veterans Day program. Colonel Caracciolo grew up in Mayfield. He is the son of Rose and Paul Caracciolo, who are seated right over here. He graduated from Lakeland High School in 1982 87. Oh, I'm sorry, 87. <laughs> Make me older than no, I am. I couldn't read my own writing. <laughs> and he graduated from the Community Medical Center School of Nursing in 1992. He enlisted in the Pennsylvania Army National Guard in 1986 and served six years. He then joined the Air Force Reserve, the 514th Aeromedical Evacuation Squadron at McGuire Air Force Base, New Jersey. He has been deployed seven times since September 11, 2001, and has visited Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Oman, United Arab Emirates, and Kuwait. He is the Aero Medical Evacuation Control Team Chief and the Chief of Training in the 550th Air Mobility Operation Squadron at the Joint Base McGuire, Dix, and Lakehurst. When not serving with the reserves, he is employed by the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections, Waymart. I'd like to present to you Lieutenant Colonel Karachi. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, to the, sorry, welcome to today's ceremony and thank you for attending. I'm honored to be speaking with you today on such an important occasion. We're here today to honor our service members and to remember their sacrifices they have made and the courage it takes to defend honor, duty, country, and family. As a veteran who was given 28 years of my life serving my country, I have to say that I am proud to have served and to still be serving the greatest country in the world. When I was a little boy growing up on 5th Street in Mayfield, I would look at my parents' photo albums and see the pictures of my father in his army uniform. I was proud to say to my friends that my dad served in the army. I knew then that I was meant to serve, to carry out the tradition of my father and uncles and cousins who served and fought for this great nation. One of the things that disturbs me as an American and a military member is Hollywood and the famous. Why, you ask? Our children spend much time watching TV, see many actors as role models. But, as many of you here know, the older generation, Hollywood has changed. As an example, during World War II, many stars stepped up, helping to defeat Nazi Germany and the Japanese. Stars such as Jimmy Stewart, Henry Fonda, Clark Gable, Douglas Fairbanks, and Lee Marvin, just to name a few. They gave up their comfortable lifestyle to fight for freedom and our way of life. Since that terrible day on September 11, 2001, when this country was attacked and the global war on terror began, can anyone here name one famous person who answered the call? Anyone? One. His name was Pat Tillman. Pat Tillman 
was an NFL player who gave up a multi-million dollar contract to join the Army, and he became an Army Ranger. Unfortunately, he gave the ultimate sacrifice when he was killed by friendly fire in Afghanistan. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an example of service before self, which in some areas of our society seem to be lacking. The writer, Michel de Moudinier, once said, Valor is stability, not of legs and arms, but of courage in the soul. We're here today to honor our heroes, to remember their achievements, their courage, and their dedication, and to say thank you for their sacrifices. Thinking of the heroes who join us in this group today, and those who are only here in spirit, a person can't help to feel awed by the enormity of what we encounter. We stand in the midst of patriots and the family and friends of those who have nobly served. I'd like to ask the service members and veterans who are here to stand or raise your hands. Thank you for answering the call to duty. You have made our armed forces the most respected in the world. Now, I'd like to ask the family members of any service member to stand or raise your hand. Go ahead. We know you have lived through difficult times and often taken the heavy load to keep the home fires burning. Thank you for what you have done. The service members we honor today came from all walks of life, but they shared several fundamental qualities. They possessed courage, pride, determination, selflessness, dedication to duty and integrity, and all the qualities needed to serve a cause larger than oneself. Many of them didn't ask to leave their homes to fight on distant battlefields. Many didn't even volunteer. They didn't go to war because they loved fighting. They were called to be a part of something bigger than themselves. They were ordinary people who responded in extraordinary ways in extreme times. They rose to the nation's call because they wanted to protect a nation which has given them, given us, so much. Since the first shots at Lexington and Concord were fired and our Revolutionary War began, American men and women have been answering the nation's call to duty. Millions of Americans have fought and died on battlefields here and abroad to defend our freedoms and way of life. Today our troops continue to make the ultimate, ultimate sacrifices and even as we lose troops, more Americans step forward to say, I'm ready to serve. They follow in the footsteps of generations of fine Americans. Veterans Day, originally called Armistice Day, was originally designated as a day to celebrate the end of World War I. The First World War ended November 11, 1918, and the legislation that cre created Veterans Day was, and I quote, dedicated to the cause of world peace and to be hereafter celebrated and known as Armistice Day. As time went on and we engaged in further conflicts during World War II and Korea, veterans groups lobbied for a change. Rather than honoring the Armistice and only those who served in World War I, the, hol the holiday would now honor all veterans from every war and conflict the United States has encountered. We've honored our troops and their service and sacrifice ever since. We have awarded medals to many soldiers, added their names to monuments, and named buildings for them to honor them for their bravery. But nothing can ever replace the hole left behind by a fallen service member, and no number of medals and ribbons can comfort the ones left behind. Today, many people throughout the country will gather together to remember, to honor, and to pay gratitude to those who have served our country. Our gathering is just a small, just one small spark in the flame of pride that burns across the nation today and every day. It's not a lot, but it's one small way we can honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can live in freedom. Your presence here today 
and that of the people gathering all across America is a tribute to those lost troops and to their families. It is a way to say we remember. From the soldiers who shivered and starved through the winter at Valley Forge to the endless formations of Union and Confederate soldiers online at Gettysburg. From the doughboys crouched in the muddy trenches of France to the greatest generation defeating the Japanese and Germans in World War II. From the Chosen Reservoir in North Korea to the platoon that patrolled the hazy jungles in Vietnam. From the dust and heat in Ramadi and Fallujah, Iraq to the young men and women patrolling mountains in Afghanistan. We remember and honor them all. Thank you for attending today. God bless you and your families. God bless our troops and God bless America. Now if I could call German Post 465 Chaplain Robert Jones forward please to read the prayer followed by the roll call of the honored fallen. Our Heavenly Father, we deem this a fitting time to pay our respects to our departed comrades as we stand with bowed heads in reverence to them let us remember the good deeds they accomplished. Let us silently pray for peace, the peace that passes all understanding. And let us in mind and soul consecrate our hearts and lives to the real America, the land of the free, the home of the brave, the America worth fighting for. As we stand in silence to our departed comrades, may we sincerely say, May their souls rest in peace. Let us also remember the POWs and the MIAs still unaccounted for from all the wars and conflicts. Amen. The Roll Call of the Dead, German, Pennsylvania. World War I, William Griffiths, Carl Baker, Thomas Harvey, Richard T. Henwood, Joseph Houston, David Jones, Frank Kelly, George Morgan, Morris Phillips, James Roach, John Zaleski, and Nicholas E. Selgrath. World War II. Henry Cherzlinski. John T. Frenchko. Jerome Friedman. Joseph G. Hemack. Donald Kraft. Henry Petrosky. Philip Rippon. Elwin White. Stanley Shoshansky. Raymond Rude. Albert Moon, Edward Sorwitz, Andrew Chubb, Walter P. Tellup, John Mikeridge, Alex Krasinowski, and William N. Usher. Korean War, Basil Keklak, Joe Soha, Vietnam War, Richard Gary Lewis. And finally, the Iraq War, Eric Slavodnik. Thank you. Gun captains, perform your duties.
At this time, I'd like to call Christine McGeechee forward, please, to sing Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He shield and portion be as long as life endures. So many beautiful voices here today. Before we go on, we have a little more to do in the program, but before we go on, Joanne asked me to remind you that we have a uh, light lunch across the street in the church when the program is finished. At this time, I'd like to call Lillian Schust forward. She has a presentation to make. Good morning. I am a member of an organization called <clears throat> Blankets for Vets. Uh, we knit, crochet, and quilt blankets, and they are distributed throughout the United States and our area. Our organization has been into being, we're in our fourth year and to date we have distributed over 2,000 blankets. Today I would like to present to Lieutenant Colonel Eugene Caracciolo. At this time, I'd like to call Mary back to the podium, please. Mike is yours. This is this is kind of a uh, special thing we've never had before. <clears throat> There's a little second grade class in John Adams School in Scranton. And they come from many different countries. And their teacher, who is Margaret Peralt, my daughter, has told them about Veterans Day. She teaches them the songs. 
she gives them a whole history so they know just what this day means. And I'd like you the, the countries they come from. India, Nepal, Indonesia, Uganda, Mexico, Turkey, Honduras, and Ecuador. And they have written a letter to a veteran. Each one wrote a letter. And the Girl Scouts are going to distribute the letters to the veterans. <coughs> Thank you. At this time, I would like Brooke and Corey Davis to come up to the podium, please. And while they're coming forward, it's my time to say thank you to the Girl Scouts, the Boy Scouts. Joanne, thank you for your help. I want to thank the choir. I'm sure I'm going to miss some people, but I want to get in. My brothers from the post, as I stand up here, I know you have my back, and I appreciate it. I'm not from German, but as I look out here, and this comes from my heart. I wish I was. Um, we are very um, proud to be um, invited here to perform again today. Um, we in the band are all very honored that we are once again invited to perform. Um, we'll be performing America's Beautiful for you. Um, I'm Brooke Stearns. I'm Corey Davis. And I'm Kayla Burns. ladies at this time we'll have a song selection by the Lakeland student band
My adjutant has told me to announce that if any veterans in the audience would like to join the American Legion, see any of the Legionnaires over there, and we'll get you to uh, him and fill out an application. At this time, our program is completed, and once again, thank you everybody who had a part in this.